What up, YouTube? I'm Dewan. Quick question. What's your troubleshooting skills like? I got a bad router. Not sure what's wrong with it, but in this video, we're gonna dive in this thing together. And maybe we can fix it, maybe not. Either way, I already got a replacement. But before we do, oh, fumble. I have a package. Not sure who it's from or what it is, but we're gonna check it out. Yeah. Ah. Alright, so Bruh, I just found your channel And I appreciate all of the time You put in for us You have no idea how you have helped me I am retired from the army in two years And I have my CCNA And CompTIA books on the way now Thank you, Harry D Yo, I found <laughs> Man, stuff like this Is what's up Thank you, fam he sent this Security Plus book, which is the SYO 401 version study guide. Next week, I'll do a giveaway. So tune in, turn on your notifications, and you can see how you can get this book. Thanks again, fam. I'm so glad and so thankful that I am able to help you and others. With that being said, let's dive into this router and see what's wrong with it. This is what I use when I'm troubleshooting. Basically... When you're working on your CCMP, it's heavy over troubleshooting. And so the way I approach troubleshooting is a problem is reported. You collect the information, you examine the information, you eliminate potential causes of the problem, you propose a hypothesis of how you could fix the problem, you verify your hypothesis, does it solve it or not? If it does not solve it, you go through the process again. Maybe you got to collect more information. You examine inf the information that you already have. And you go through the whole steps all the way back down to verifying the hypothesis until you resolve the problem or problem resolution. That's pretty much it. With no further ado, let's dive into this router. If you've seen my live video, my home live video, I have a Cisco 2600 router. I'm getting all types of gibberish on it specifically it's a 2620 i've had this router for i don't know two maybe three years or something like that it worked like a charm if you're interested in this router i will have a link to amazon where you can purchase one they're pretty cheap and they get the job done like i said i used it for my ccmp let's plug it up just like connecting to a switch i have a video up here somewhere on how to console into a switch. You're gonna need a console cable. If you don't have one, I'll have an Amazon affiliate link in the description below on how you can get a console cable. You'll need a USB to serial. So USB on one end and serial on the other to connect to your console cable. And then also a power cord, standard uh, 110 power cord. So all we have to do is plug into our console port on our router, like so, boom. Connect the USB to serial connection, boom. That's good to go. You take the USB in and plug it into your computer. And now you take your power and plug it into your router. And into your outlet. Boom. Now normally, I know a lot of you use PuTTY. So what you would do with PuTTY is you would use your serial connection, find out which COM port that you're using. Go in here to manage, start, right click my computer. I'm using Windows 7, but it's pretty much the same thing. Right click my computer, um, go to manage, then go down to device manager. And while you're in device manager, you'll go into ports and you'll find out which COM port your USB to serial connection is connected to. I'm in COM3. And then you would just change this to COM3. Now, <clears throat> I don't use PuTTY. I use Secure CRT. So what we're going to do in this video is Secure CRT. If you guys want to know more about Secure CRT, let me know and I'll do a video on how you can download it and get it. Um, don't go buying it until you watch the video because I can tell you how you can get it cheaper. So, 
I'll right click my console port and make sure that my serial connection is three, which it is. And I'll click OK. And then we'll double click console and we'll watch this thing boot up. All right. It's NFL season, football season, and I'm a Browns fan. Y'all can hate all y'all want, but the Browns can go 0 for 16, and I still look at y'all like this John Gravy. <laughs> Jay-Z reference. If you ain't know, I'm, I'm a huge Jay-Z fan. I'm a hip-hop fan, so. If the music good, I'm up on it. But anyway, yeah, this router, what happened was, I was moving some stuff around in my house. It was downstairs in a pile with my laptop, my router, and the switch. And my, I guess my kids were upstairs filling up water balloons for some reason in, in the bathroom. Like, why would you be filling up water balloons upstairs in the bathroom? But hey, they're kids. They do that. It's cool. Well, they were filling up water balloons and either a pipe leaked or something overflow. I'm not sure. I believe it was a pipe because we got the pipe replaced. But either way, after that happened, it leaked all the way down on my ceiling onto my router. It got wet. It's all bad. And I booted it up and it would not boot. So this is my first time booting this router since. And what do you know? It boots. <laughs> This is crazy. Have you ever dropped your phone in a toilet? Let's 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 log into this thing and see how it's working. Have you ever dropped your phone in like a puddle, a toilet, or something like that? Only to realize you put it in rice, it dries out, then it works. Maybe that's what happened with this router because it would not work. Like it was done. So when that happens. If your company has smart, smart net on the router, the router's under warranty or something, you would call Cisco Tech and one of their ice cold, cold blooded super engineers will walk you through troubleshooting. If they can't, they call a CCIE. But normally, there's some very sharp CCNAs that you're talking to a Cisco Tech that's walking you through troubleshooting your devices. But that's neither here nor there. With that being said, Cisco, if you need a super engineer, hit me up. I'm I'm highly available and ready to move to San Francisco. Let's let's do a show IP interface brief and see how this thing is working. Man, it has configs on it. Show IP protocols. Hey, now let's do a show run pipe um, begin. Let's say route. Um, no routing config. So let's do a show run. It does not look like I have any routing configs configured. Just IP addresses, and I have no routing configs configured. So we do a show IP route. Yep, just directly connected loopbacks on this interface. But what we can do is test it out. Let's see if it works. Now, if you do not have another router or switch configured or something, and you just have a router, what you can use is a crossover cable to connect to your router's ethernet port to your laptop or desktop. Uh, basically, um, computers and routers are like devices. So whenever you connect a laptop or desktop to an ethernet port on a router, you wanna be sure to use a crossover cable. I actually have one upstairs. Let me go get it and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Now I have my crossover cable. The thing about a crossover cable, Normally, when you're using a straight through cable, it's going to be the same pinout on both ends. You know, 568B standard, pretty much. White, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, and white, brown, brown. That's pretty much the 568B. But with a crossover cable like we have here, the one end is going to be swapped. Now, it does not matter which end you plug into the router or switch or computer to computer because computers are like devices, and if you don't have a switch, you can use a crossover cable. Now, with that being said, one end has to be 568A, and the other end has to be 568B. Now, the 568A is gonna be white, green, green, white, orange, white, brown, brown, orange, blue, white, blue. And that's your 568A pinout. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna plug 
one end into my router, another end into my switch, and we're going to test out connectivity. Now that we have that connected, we can go ahead and do show IP interface brief. And as you can see, my um, Ethernet interface, I do not have an IP address configured. What I'll do is go in here to config T. And we'll bring up the fast Ethernet connection with an IP address. IP address, and let's give it 192.168.1.1. And then 255. Let's make it a slash 24. That's zero. And then do a no shut. Now it should be up. Now that we have the IP address on the router configured, we have to go into our laptop and configure the IP address on there in the same subnet as the router. So if I go to properties, IPv4, and I'll give it 192.168.1.2, and it's uh, slash 24. And we click OK and close this out. Now let's see if we can ping. Uh, <laughs> I can't ping it, and I can tell you exactly why. But before I do, let's go to the let's go Windows R and pull up CMD. Now that we have command prompt up, I bet you pinging the router will be successful. Boom! You see it's successful. Here's why it. The router is unable to ping the laptop. On Windows systems, out the box, you have to turn on file and printer sharing in order for that device to be pingable and all that good stuff on the network. If you've ever dealt with a server client infrastructure environment, you've probably dealt with this in the past. And trust me, throughout my career, I've dealt with this and struggled and <laughs> had all types of issues to only be like, man, I forgot to do that. So what we're going to do is go in here to um, advanced sharing settings, and then we're going to turn on file and print sharing for home and work network, and then click save settings. And now when I go to paint this device, boom, good to go. We're rocking and rolling. I'm going to do a write mail. Or in other words, copy run start for all of you book readers and Cisco heads out there that are working on your CCNA and ICND, whatever. Copy run start. Copy your running configuration to your startup configuration. And now once this completes, we'll reload just to make sure this router is actually functioning because we tested connectivity. We made sure that it booted. It booted in a timely fashion and it didn't really take that long. So I don't think we really have an issue with this. So let's just go reload and then see if it comes up. We'll try to ping again and all that good stuff. Now, if I really wanted to dive in, I could connect this to another router, connect it to another switch, do a whole networking to see if it's routing, to see how everything's functioning, you know, see how packets and just so many things that I could do to this device, but I'm just going to make sure it functions. And if it does, it works. I don't have to trash it. It's not a brick. <laughs> if you heard that expression, a lot of times when a router or a switch does not boot, people call it a brick. You'll hear it. You'll hear it throughout your career. Trust me. But we'll wait. While we're waiting on this thing to boot up, follow me on my Twitter. That's DLight330. Feel free to reach out with questions, whatever you may have. Feel free to hit me up. All right, so enable the password is Cisco and test Shy IP interface brief. Everything's up, up. Let's ping 192.168.1.2. See if it works. Boom. Still working. This hey, this thing looks like it works. So let's go over some show commands before we wrap this up. Some show commands that you should know. Of course, you should know show run. This is the running config on your device. And let's see, another one, show IP interface. That's one that shows you your, your lines that they're up and up. The IP address of that line, the MTU, if you have an access list configured, um, IP flow, if it's all that, IP Ceph on that interface, it gives you a lot of detailed information about your interfaces. Um, show IP interface brief is probably my favorite. Knowing some piping commands with that. 
So if we went try P interface brief and did pipe exclude down, it would exclude all down um, interfaces. If we did exclude unassigned, it would exclude all unassigned interfaces. Just knowing you're piping, show IP protocols is another one. When you're dealing with routing, gotta know that. Show access lists. to see what access lists are configured on your device. Um, what's another one? There's so many different show commands that are on your devices, but those are just some of the main ones that I use. The show IP routes is we're dealing with a router. Show IP NAT translations. That's another one when you're dealing with NAT. Let's see. There's so many show commands. I figured we'll wrap this video up with, you know, just a few to get you guys all started on your networks. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please feel free to leave comments in the section below. Hit this video with a, a thumbs up, like, share it out to your friends. Subscribe if you have not already subscribed to my channel. I'm gonna keep these videos coming. And as always, keep pushing, keep putting in the work and believe in yourself. I'm Dewan and I'm out. Peace.